Welcome back, everybody. It's Friday, May 10th, 2024. Born on this date in 1940, the late singer-songwriter Arthur Alexander of Sheffield. Today, we're going to stick a fork in this legislative session, tell you who's made an offer to buy the Birmingham Southern Campus, and more. Also, our Down in Alabama News Review Quiz is back, and we have another victim. I mean, contestant. My name's Ike Morgan, and we're Down in Alabama. The Alabama legislative session is over. The Alabama Senate adjourned a few minutes after 6 p.m. Thursday. The breeze you felt around that time was so many people who stopped holding their breath, wondering whether a lottery slash casinos bill might get a revote and a chance to get onto a statewide ballot. The one additional vote the Senate needed to cross the two-thirds threshold for proposed constitutional amendment did not materialize. It did get enough attention Thursday that it held up a few other bills for a while, including the education fund budget. Now, this gambling effort is one that comes up short every year, but this is the closest it's come to passing in more than two decades. Now, asked whether she might consider calling a special session to try to get gambling on the ballot, Governor Kay Ivey said, quote, Why would I do that? They cannot come to a consensus among themselves. Why would I spend the time and effort and money on a special session? Now, the education budget passed at $9.3 billion plus $1.7 billion in additional spending. Now, that's $11 billion total for the honors math students among us. It includes a 2% raise for state education employees and $10 million in EBT benefits for summer 2025 and $5 million that was in the supplemental budget for a retirement fund for educators was reallocated to community college capital projects, historical and arts grants, and a principal leadership program. Meanwhile, in Washington, U.S. Senator Katie Britt is co-sponsoring the More Opportunities for Moms to Succeed Act, M-O-M-S, Moms, you get that. It does a few things, reports AL.com's Amy Yerkinen. First, it requires child support to begin with pregnancy instead of at birth. It creates a clearinghouse of adoption and anti-abortion pregnancy crisis centers, and it introduces grants for telehealth care, something targeting places such as Alabama's rural areas where health care facilities have closed. Now, others argue that Medicaid expansion would be more helpful than supporting the pregnancy crisis centers. Alabama A&M University has offered $52 million to purchase Birmingham Southern College, reports AL.com's Howard Kopowitz. Birmingham Southern, of course, is the private college that's ceasing operations at the end of the month over financial troubles. Alabama A&M is a historically black university in Huntsville. A&M said it plans to keep BSC's credentialed faculty and staff and operate the school as a standalone campus under A&M's umbrella. Many Birmingham folks already have a personal connection to Alabama A&M besides the obvious cultural phenomenon that is the annual Magic City Classic football game in Birmingham between A&M and Alabama State. A&M VP of Government Relations and External Affairs Shannon Reeves said 10% of the school's students are from Birmingham and that Jefferson County is home to more A&M alumni than any other. BSC officials say they've had communications with several potential buyers. Earlier this month, State Senator America Coleman said Birmingham's private HBCU, Miles College, was trying to organize other HBCUs in the state to consider buying the campus together. There's another leg to the Rush Probe saga at Pell City High School. AL.com's Ben Thomas reports that the accomplished yet controversial football coach's surprising resignation, which came days after an effort to fire him failed, also came the week that his wages were supposed to begin being garnished over spousal support, a court said he owed to his ex-wife. The total amount of unpaid support and legal fees owed, according to a Jefferson County Circuit Court judge, is $123,875. So the judge ordered that $2,000 per month be held from Prope's income from Pell City Schools. Prope said that the timing of his resignation was not related to the garnishment. The court order, which came on April 16th, eight days before the effort to oust Prope's, 
included a threat to issue a writ of arrest in order to serve 310 days in jail for criminal contempt, but it's not clear whether that has been pursued. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back and let State News Editor Kent Falk take our news quiz. See y'all in a minute. Hey, thanks everybody for coming back. It's Friday and we're going to do another news review quiz. We have brought in fresh meat to take the quiz. Kent Falk is one of the editors with AL.com. He's over state and political news where the reporters are so good. He doesn't really have to do anything. I mean, am I, am I summing that up right, Kent? Exactly right. I just sit around watching watching YouTube videos all day while I, I wait on the reporters to tell me what they're doing. I had a similar job to that one time. That's that's a that's a great one to have. That's the idea. Get a great staff. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Kent Kent knows Alabama news and state news, and he's a veteran reporter. And I met him at the uh, the Birmingham News, and we both made the tradition uh, the transition to AL dot com. Um, it's 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 a pretty busy time. Uh, maybe a bad one for me to pull Kent aside, but he was good enough to do this as we uh, finish up this legislative session. Uh, before we start, Kent, I, what is your takeaway from this session, by the way? What 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 do you think it, people are going to remember it for? Oh, they're going to remember one vote. One vote short of uh, approving a vote on the lottery. It's the closest we've we've come since the the vote in um, what was it twenty five years ago under the Siegel administration, yeah. where they put that up for a vote for everybody. It's the closest we've come so far. A, a clean lottery bill would probably get through pretty easily, wouldn't you say? Well, has there ever been a clean bill for anything in this state? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, let's get to the quiz. And the idea here is to see whether Kent, with this busy se- session, has been keeping up with some of the other news. Now, some of these are related to the session because I can't help it. That's what a, a lot of our news has been over the past couple of weeks, especially. But OK, Kent, I don't have a buzzer when you get one wrong, which I really want to get me one of those. But I will figure out some way to shame you, you know, and, and question, uh, what, what you're reading through the day. So uh, we did that with John a little bit. He, he did miss one. So, um, uh, we were able to call him on the carpet a little bit, but, um, let's get started. Question yeah. number, question number one. And then this is related to the legislature. So slam dunk here. What tax was increased by a bill that made it through the Alabama legislature this session? A, supplies that are purchased to be used at least partly in the production of medicinal marijuana. B, the additional tax rates at the state-run ABC liquor stores. C, taxes on liquor anywhere it's sold in the state. Or D, ending a little-known 17-year tax cut on Little Debbie oatmeal cream pies. Well, I would like to say the Little Debbie, but I think it's the... The the one right before that, where it's the uh, the statewide ABC, where it's it raises the uh, the the tax that had been two percent and raised it up to whatever the local is. It can that's be right. The high, yeah. So is that's that, right. Is that what you were looking for? That was actually that is correct, and that's actually was B. But the answer you gave was the right one. Where yeah, they're they're going to combine the city and county taxes, right. and that's going to be your um, your added on tax for ABC stores only. And the idea, and I guess the idea there, so uh, liquor stores can raise their prices. Exactly, government run versus private competition is leveled leveled out a little bit. Yeah. Question number two. Recently, 
Auburn University student, recently an Auburn University student who's seeking a master's degree in forestry, established a Guinness World Record for doing this to 1,123 trees in Tuskegee National Forest. A, pruning their unhealthy branches. B, planting them from seedlings. C, hugging them. Or D, because scientific evidence suggests plants respond well to music, exposing them to a nonstop loop of Lionel Richie singing Easy Like Sunday Morning. Hugging them. You got it right. You had to read the story to get that one right. Oh, it was it was hugging them. It was, uh, yeah. Well, I only get three in one hour, not 1,123. So. <laughs> you hug. Through, get to, uh, around to hugging three trees. Well, you don't give you more. All, qual- don't you hug your trees every day? Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the quality over quantity in tree hugging, I think, is is important. <laughs> and and he'll, he's a student. He'll learn that. <laughs> <laughs> pine trees versus hardwoods. I mean, there's a, there's a difference. Come on. Yeah, p- pine trees can be a little prickly. I don't think that they are given their consent. That's that's my big big thing. <laughs> Question number three: The Alabama legislature here's another here's another one from Goat Hill passed a bill this session setting timelines for state agencies to respond to public records requests. Previously, government officials effectively responded to such requests: a within six to eight weeks, B, within a year, C, whenever they got around to it, or D, sometime after Charles Barkley is elected governor? Oh, man. I'm going to say C. Yes, I didn't give you you precise wording on that, but C is the right answer. We'll do a ding, ding on that whenever they got around to it, in in effect. Actually, Charles Barkley is probably... Just as good an answer, anyway. But. It it might be he. Uh, it is for a a bunch of requests that have probably been out there for years. But I don't think he's really interested in the job anymore. That was a long time ago. He said he was. He might have still been in the NBA when someone asked him what he's going to do down the road, and he said, "I'm going to run for governor of Alabama." Yeah. Well, that was and, never going to happen. Just like a records request is never <laughs> was never going to happen. So. Number four, we'll move on. Uh, Kyle Ogden of the Florence restaurant Odette won the annual Alabama seafood cook-off recently. This one's a little tougher. What was the winning dish? All right, A, a pompano filet with a crab and shrimp mousse. B, crawfish bisque. C, pecan-crusted mahi-mahi with gouda cheese grits. Or D, smoked gar throats on saltine crackers. D, was it D? It is not D. That ah. would that would be a challenge if you made that good. <laughs> smoked gar throats on saltine crackers. Then you deserve to win. <laughs> that answer was a pompano fillet with a crab and shrimp mousse. Well, I don't think I was going to have any of that, but okay. Nah, you, you had to. Yeah, you, you had absolutely had to just read that story. Probably that probably is a little unfair, but um, Hammond Tree is happy somewhere because he he missed one last week, so you didn't okay. beat him. We have one more, uh, and this one, you know, this one you you really had to read the story too, I think. But but we'll see, and and it's kind of in one of your sort of in one of your interests in college football. Um, former University of Alabama player and athletics director Hootie Ingram recently passed away. Now, his career also included a number of coaching gigs as well as work with the SEC. Among his many contributions to the sport, which of these did Ingram help bring about? A, the mirrored visors that were once popular with players. B, Florida State's planning the spear tradition. C, Clemson's paw print logo, or D, the fake ball spike? C. You got it right. Yeah, you knew he was the head coach at Clemson. and He also, I believe, brought back the running down the hill tradition. It had been a tradition and went away for a while. 
Hmm. And that's a big one there. Do they, is that the one where they run down, they touch that thing at the bottom? The rock, um, yeah. The rock or whatever, yeah, whatever they do over there. That's what <laughs> Do, do you have a dog in this hunt or is there you pay attention to college football i think i've heard you mention yeah. once or twice oh yeah once or twice. Yeah. what what is your what, what is your team with university of alabama come on that's come on. it yeah. That, yeah that was it that's my that's my alma mater and uh so anyway is is heaven is heaven uh commissioned the uh, the paw print logo there, there's no, there's, there's no shame on that. That's just another case of Alabama folks going out and making other schools better. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. You had Danny Ford go to Clemson too, right? Oh yeah, and so someone more recently than that also. And, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, a little <laughs> guy, a little uh, wide receiver from Pelham that uh, got his name to something, da- Debbie or Deb- <laughs> uh, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. You know, Dav- Davo Swinney's uh, career highlight has to be the 93 national champion team mm-hmm. that he played at Alabama. And Hootie was the um, athletic director at that time. Um, and, uh, yes, I went to that. Yes, I will say I was at that game in New Orleans. It was one of the greatest games of my life. I think I lived in Andalusia at the time. Or was moving to Andalusia. I I didn't expect that game to go the way that it did. I don't think many people did. No, 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 nobody did. Well, you got four out of five, and there's there's no shame in that because there were while there were a couple of slam dunks for you with the legislature. Uh, four out of five. We also threw in a couple of fairly obscure ones, and uh, the only one you missed was the the uh, the pompano filet but thanks for coming on and doing this kent i know you're a busy man right now as we uh put a bow on this legislative session uh, come back and come back and do it again come back and talk to me about news sometime thanks thanks for having me on I all appreciate right i appreciate it, it. We'll, we'll talk to you later and thanks everybody for listening we're going to be back here again monday bright and early until then y'all come on by and see us whenever you want to on the internet at al.com mm-hmm.